Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Chad. In this video, I will introduce a very, very important function that is MacWiz Portfolio Theory. For a long time before, I have been asked a question by many friends. Like, the, I already know which stock to buy, but I don't know which stock to buy exactly. Everyone is always concerned about the problem of the asset allocation. This video will tell you how to use financial arsenal to rationally allocate your stock asset to match your risk level and maximize your portfolio returns. I need to stay in advance. This theory not apply to all investors. If you are doing daily trading or the short-term trading, in that situation, portfolio allocation is not a very big problem for you. Because your position is changing at any time, this method is more suitable for friends who are investing in long time, the long term, and the value. They don't make a lot of uh, um, a lot of adjustments every hour or the every day. Okay, let's go back to our business. Okay, it's our traditional link. Today, the big four questions will include the correlation coefficient and the return distribution, portfolio theory, and how to operate in financial arsenal. This video is also the most difficult one in the entire first stage. So if you want to understand every principle, you have to patiently listen the first three parts, and I will give you very detailed introduction. <laughs> Okay, in this chapter on the distribution of the returns, I need to say that it has a lot of to do with probability distribution and the statistic, like the skewness, the courtesies. Oh no, I don't like that word. But in order to reduce the difficulty, I don't want to involve too much of these contents. So please follow my idea to think. First, I want to ask a question for you. What do you think of those three stock charts? Which stock has the most volatility? When you have the answer, I will tell you more. The first stock is a trend of the Tesla this year since May 1st. The second one is the Apple the APL. The last one is a TLT, which is an ETF of the US Treasury bonds. Now, please update your answer in your head based on the information you have known so far. We continue to look down. I have chosen the frequency, histogram of daily return. The horizontal axis is at the range of the each stock daily return. It can be seen that Tesla daily return range is very wide, followed by Apple, and the TLT is an ETF of the bonds, so its return feature is more like the bond style. The characteristic of volatility of the bond return will be smaller than stock. The vertical axis is their density, which you can be understand as a probability, it occurrence. In the end, we will get their respective standard deviations. We will find that Tesla has the largest standard deviation, followed by Apple, then it's TLT. The standard deviation of TLT is very small. So now let's answer the question just now. Which stock has the most volatility? According to standard deviation, the answer should be Tesla. The standard deviation of the return is a very good judgment indicator of a volatility of a stock. It is unreliable method to judge the trend or charts with your naked eyes. There is no way to get a accurate result. So now I will ask you a very important question. Everyone think whether a larger standard deviation represents a higher risk. That question is uh, very important for this chapter. To make it easier for everyone to understand, I can give you a very live example. 
if you are playing a game like the PUBG, you can choose the three rifles. The first one is the AKM. The second one is a SCAR. The last one is a Vector. And you are going to participate a shooting game out of the 50 meters. Which gun would you choose? I think if you are a player who likes a high stability, you might be choose a vector, right? Because it's a ballistic distribution is very concentrated. Answer is here. Considering the overall risk, which gun has the worst stability? The AKM is a Tesla here. Because it has a widest range and the largest standard deviation of the daily return. So from this moment on, we need to get a new and a very strict concept. That is, when a stark uh, the daily return standard deviation is larger, it represents the stark risk bigger. This is what you need to know about the distribution of return. The correlation coefficient is not a very difficult concept to understand. From the common sense, we can understand that the correlation may be measure of the relationship between two things. But here, we are only measuring a linear relationship. Remember, linear. The relationship coefficient range from negative 1 to positive 1. Keep in mind, 0 means there is no linear relationship between two things. In order to facilitate your understanding, I'll give us three very good examples. In the first group of the sample, please look at the AAL and the DAL. There are two airlines, American Airlines and the Delta Airlines. Their business are similar. So their stock price fluctuates very similarity. The horizontal axis is such a return of the American line stock and the vertical axis is a return of the Delta's daily return. Then we draw them together and the everyone found that is what almost a straight line relationship indicating that two stock their correlation is very strong. There is a strong linear correlation and the correlation coefficient is higher as a point 86. In general, when the correlation coefficient is greater than 0.7, that means it is a relatively strong relationship in here. So the second example is two technology companies, Tesla and uh, Apple. Even if their business are not very similarity, but they are all technology stocks. Sometimes they increase, they decrease, and fluctuation uh, at the same times. From the plot, we can also roughly see a positive relationship trend. So their correlation coefficient is not very strong, but it still has a point of 55. Finally, I used the, the previous example, Tesla and the TLT. Once again, TLT is an ETF of US Treasury bond. We can see that there is no any patent in that scatter plot. So their co correlation coefficient is very close to zero. That is, there is no any linear relationship. Okay, in short, the correlation coefficient is a measure of the degree of linear correlation between two stocks. I think that is that you have to know that someone may ask me, why do I need to know the correlation coefficient? Okay, everyone must heard a proverb, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So now I give you two baskets if you put your all egg into the two basket equally, is that safe? Consider that. After introducing the concept of the correlation coefficient, we will find out. In fact, it is not necessarily safe. 
if the correlation coefficient between the two basket is very high or reach to positive one, it means that after one basket is overturned, the other basket is like to overturn with him. So there is no way to help us diversify our risk. If when we allocate the stocks, we should follow the same idea to try to choose a correlation lower stock uh, allocated so that we can diversify our risk well. That when you fully understand this thought, we can enter today's highlight. Come with me. Okay, let's introduce Markway's portfolio theory. This set of theories contains many elements and complex mathematical calculations. I don't like that. So I will try to simplify some elements when explaining. For professional players, please don't feel too strange. After all, this video just for our beginner, right? Okay, first of all, let's look at the first chart. What is a horizontal? Access. It represents a standard deviation of a stock, which is to measure risk level. When the standard deviation of the stock daily return is higher, it presents a greater volatility and the risk. The vertical axis in this chart, which is a target return, so that is we calculate average of the daily or the weekly or the yearly monthly return so that we can get a expected return that is a target return you can understand that is a mean it's an expectation so when we understand that everyone will find there are three stock in here let's take a look at the small dots i mark their position with three arrows for the yellow stock, its risk and its return are relatively small. The green one is follow that. The blue stock has the highest risk and its return are also highest. I know, I know, there must be a lot of questions. Those three stock, how should we allocate it? What is the arc shape area composed of the so many black dots here? How should I look at this chart? Okay, okay, so next I will explain the most important part of the whole chart. This, this is our black theory of the small dots. We call it efficient frontier. Before I introduce this concept, I want to talk to you first a small example. According to what we said before, if one investor at this time holds those three stocks, he doesn't want to make any effective allocation. He said, I think it would be fine if I hold the one third of each of the three stock. I want to hold it with equal weight. I don't want to make any adjustment to risk or the return. Okay, let's take a look what will happen. Here, did you see the green arrow? My green arrow point to a blue new point. That new point means that we assume that if we have equally an uh, equal weight of three stock, this blue point is a return and the risk level of our portfolio, which we can see. It risks seem to between the first and the second stock, and it, its return is probably between the return of the second and the third stock. This also seems to be pretty good result. So now I want to tell you what the black area represents. The area above the composed of the small black black dots, no matter how we figure it out, how we allocate it, we will never reach that point. Uh, just example, if you want to get a very high return with a very small risk level that is impossible, never gonna happen. So efficient frontier given by the black dots measures the limit range of our portfolio. Then please compare our frontier with our blue dots. 
Have you found anything wrong? As a blue dots, we don't let the return reach its limit. That's the problem. What does that mean? We have taken the corresponding risk. Yes, the blue point, the standard deviation, that risk we take it, but we did not get the maximum return at that risk level. So we can quickly think of where is the problem. Because we haven't made any adjustment, we just divide it into three equal parts. What should be done and what is the efficient frontier? We may use more advanced scientific tools to help everyone understand. And here, I need to introduce a method called the Monte Carlo simulation. Monte Carlo simulation is to use a computer to simulate it all possible situations. In here's example, we can see the shadow part make up the all of the situation uh, we can get. The area is our three stock of the of the return and of the risk level we can achieve under all situation. So please take a look at this area and try to answer a question. In such a large area, where do you want your final portfolio risk and return to be? I believe it's not difficult for you to say that. We certainly hope that our final point, our final portfolio is on the efficient frontier because that name is efficient. We want to efficient. Then we have made our goal clear. So the, for first, we must ensure the final result, the final point of our portfolio at the efficient frontier. The next step is to pick a point on the efficient frontier and pick one of the, our ideal point. It may depend on our life, our uh, risk appetite, that's, no, that, that's not a problem. Even if there are some investors who like to have very high risk and a higher return, that's fine. That's no problem. So the last part, I'm going to tell everyone how we are going to pick a point on the efficient frontier. Let's go next. Have you said a small red dot appeared? And I also marked it with a green arrow. That point is very special. Please remember it. Its name is called the minimum variance portfolio. What does that mean? Everyone, please look at the horizontal axis of this point. And say again, that is represents the standard deviation of return, which is measures the entire portfolio volatility risk level. So if you say I'm very, very conservative investor, okay, congratulations. You don't want to take too much risk, right? Then please come to this point according to the weight of this red dot. Then you can get one with the least risk. Okay, let's continue to look up. Did you see the tangent? I also marked it with a green arrow. The tangent and the efficient frontier also reached a point. Have you seen the point? This point is very important. This point is about the sharp ratio, but I don't want to expand here. It's a lot of uh, mathematics. Uh, I will use a very brief sentence to summarize this point. Please remember. The allocation at this point is the most effective and optimal. But if you say that this point with a very high risk, I don't want to take so many risks, but I don't want to miss it. What should I do? Oh, that's fine. Feel free. You may not choose this point that we just need to choose a point between the minimum risk, the red dot, and the optimal allocation point. Any point on the efficient frontier, we can choose that. So how to choose a point and how to look at the weight of the above three stock in specific, the point, 
we must be use a computer god we can figure it out by brain please open the financial arsenal it will tell you what you uh, should to do in practical demonstration okay we have entered the financial arsenal we first find this where is the portfolio theory function please click here stock analysis then this one is we need to use today well today's three stocks as the demos are apple mcdonald and uh, johnson and johnson there are three completely different industry so together them can better diversify the risk the time is from May 1st this year to the end of this year. So look here, I added a little bit about the Marquis portfolio theory, which won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1990. His theory influenced a lot to later development of the finance. Oh, I'm, so I'm sorry, I started to talk about the development and the history of the theory again. Okay, okay, let's take a look at our main panels. The first panel on the right is an efficient frontier panel. Here we can see what risk and return of our stock or our portfolio. So everything will be presented when the three stocks are combined together or just an individual separate. And these two charts need to be viewed together. They are talking about such a like the weight of the portfolio, uh, what kind of the risk level and the return you want to achieve. Uh, you need to pick a point and you want to find their corresponding weight. You can find it in here. That's a very important function. Uh, and the last panel is to do such a analysis about distribution and correlation coefficient. Uh, there are I also draw a scatter plot in here. The plot is very convenient. You can immediately to see relationship between those stock. Then I will start uh, today's tutorial in detail. For those friends who skip it to this demonstration without reading any previous tutorials, that's fine. I will give you a brief training here. First of all, please click here to take a look at three stocks. What are their corresponding risk and their return for each stock? Let's click go, go, go. We will find the risk and return corresponding to these three stocks. Please look at the horizontal axis represents a risk standard deviation and the Vertical axis represents the expect return. We also call it the target return. We will find their three stocks has their own characteristic. Like the first one in here that the risk and the return are relatively small. I guess it should be Johnson Johnson. The second one, the risk and return are slightly greater. That should be McDonald. The apple should be the highest one in here. Next, after seeing the three individual stock, we want to take a look when the three of them are matched with equal weight. That is, no any adjustment is made. What will happen to the portfolio risk and the portfolio return? We can test it. Click go 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 again. The result of such a portfolio with equal weight we look at this new point, which is a blue point, right? The risk of our portfolio is lower than these three stocks for anyone. The risk level looks very good. In such a position, its return also higher than that the first two stock. So the result of the equal weighting is like this. Let's look at the all point on efficient Frontier. Before proceeding this teaching, I will demonstrate the other function. One is a minimized risk portfolio. Let's take a look at the minimum risk portfolio. Have you seen this red point in other words? 
let's write point equal to if you match a certain weight, you can reach the red point. So if you are very, very conservative investor, you say, I'm too afraid of a uh, risk. Can you help me diversify risk as much as possible? No problem. Please choose this red point. I will tell you how to find the red point of the portfolio weight later. Okay, let's take a look at it again. The second one, I add the tangent. What is a tangent? Look here, regarding the tangent, we also see the tangent point is on the frontier. In here, what does the point mean? It presents the optimal risky portfolio under theoretical calculation. So it calculated based on the sharp ratio, if you know that, but I will not expand it here. You only need to know at this point, it is the optimal solution in all of the situation. Let's see what other function are here. We can also see Monte Carlo simulation. Before starting the simulation, I will turn off the others function first because it may cause the computer to freeze. Let's take a look. What is Monte Carlo simulation? Okay, have you seen the shadow area formed by this small dot? The computer has used the simulation to tell us that all portfolio result. When those three stocks are combined with different weight, the shadow area, that is, show the all possible, the all possible result likely to appear. Now, please think about a question. Will your portfolio appear in such an area? Think about it. That is impossible, right? You can be within a very small risk level and to make a lot of money to retrieve a high return. So this portfolio, this point, you can reach. Now, I have to ask a question. Now, we know that our portfolio will appear in this area. What kind of the point in this area will be selected by you? So in the previous detailed instructional video, I also talk about it. What is efficient frontier? Let me explain again here. The upper edge, see here, upper edge of the black dot is our efficient frontier. Some people say that there are some small point like here, the lower edge. Why don't we choose this place? Okay. Let's think about a question. Assume the efficient frontier uh, is here. We have selected this point. Look at this point. So I have already taken such a risk. Why does my return come to here? If I take such a risk, I will definitely pursue a higher return, right? It should be higher. I should be corresponding to this point of the return and I should require higher. So when the portfolio is matched, any point, let's say any point below the efficient frontier, that is inefficient, you should not choose this area of them. Okay, that is an explanation about first chart. Let me open my minimum risk portfolio and my optimal tangent. Okay, okay. That, let's go to today's highlight. How should we to match the first chart the points our portfolio to the second and the third chart to find the corresponding weight? I have just mentioned that. Our first step is to avoid inflation allocation. We must ensure our portfolio point, our final result on the efficient frontier. You can choose the red dot or to the end, the everywhere on the efficient frontier. You can allocate it, feel free. Let's see those two charts 
there are two pictures are a little bit difficult to understand, but that's fine. Uh, let me explain briefly to everyone. This place, please see here, correspond to the horizontal axis in our first chart here. That is our standard deviation, the risk level. Okay, let's continue to see here, this place correspond to the vertical axis in our first chart. Yes, here. That is our target return, expected return. That is to say, at any point on our efficient frontier, we can reach such a point. In the second part, the second part includes the two chart you have said, uh, and such a chart actually tell you what is a stock weight need. The first chart use a 100% system. Uh, some people like the second chart, uh, like the more intuitive. It will tell you what is the specific weight number. For example, like the apple, you can find the apple is this color and what percentage you need to allocate it for apple. Okay, now I will tell you a very, very important thing. Please keep it in mind. Have you seen the black vertical line here? The black, black line? Yeah. Um, please be sure to look at this line first when you're allocating. When you find the black line, all area to the left, the so all area, including here, to the left of the black line must be ignored. You can choose that. You can choose this area. Why? I can explain the black vertical line corresponding to the red points in our first chart. What is our red point? That is minimize risk portfolio, right? The portfolio on the left of the black line is the lower half the frontier. That area, we do not want it very much. If you find your portfolio current has such an allocation in this area, I'm sorry, please adjust it as soon as possible because that is very inefficient. Uh, you suffer a risk, but in that risk level, you didn't reach the higher return. So that is inflation. Uh, okay, let's look to the right from the black vertical line. Um, yes, for those very conservative investors, you can allocate your portfolio with the black line because here is uh, uh, the red dot in the first chart. Uh, like this, this blue one is McDonald's and this white one is an Apple. Just follow uh, this weight and this order that you can choose the every point from this red point to the end of the efficient frontier. The every point on the efficient frontier, you can choose it. Uh, you can make a choice on this chart and uh, you can choose uh, any points and uh, any weight, but must on this chart. Okay, uh, give example when allocated to the end to this area, you may keep just one stock. Why? Uh, if if an investor who are uh, pursuing a very higher re a return and risk, the system will automatically tell you that you can all in Apple, but they don't tell you all in the McDonald or the all in the Johnson Johnson. Okay, uh, that's a demonstration in this part. I want to talk about this one, distribution of historical returns. This part is actually very important for research, but the picture look like this, like this in here. I have talked about in previous tutorials, I give the PUBG example. You can get back to read that. Uh, let's see example we can use, use Apple, A-A-P-L. Apple's left tail is relatively long. What does that mean? It means it has an extreme loss in here. That's a historic return, right? So it means there is a still possibility of extremely loss in a single trading day. 
you also can see, see here that this place is a correlation coefficient between those two stocks, generally speaking. If it is uh, less than 0.7.7, .7, we will not think they are highly correlated. Here is a scatter chart. You can also see a trend of the corresponding return. If it's highly relevant, it might be show a linear, re a linear trend, linear relationship. So this video will introduce those functions. Thank you. Uh, please, please try to find the best allocation through several attempts. You can bring your portfolio to the most effective position. Today's learning content is over. Once again, I need to remind you this portfolio theory is very difficult, but important part, even for the professional student in business school, it is very challenging for them. So don't worry if you don't understand at one times, feel free, don't worry. Uh, just go back to several times, you, you, you can understand that. Mm, if you don't have time, that's fine. You can jump to the practical demonstration first and say what you need to do in financial arsenal. But when you have time, I still hope you to go back to look at the first few important elements and chapter to reinforce your financial knowledge and uh, financial background. However, next week I will teach DCF stock valuation method. This is also super heavy content. Many investment bank and the other institutions, as I know, use this method to do stock pricing and then give public a target price. So it is very important part. Uh, when you learn it, you can value a stock by yourself very quickly with uh, financial arsenal. Okay, friends, if you like this video, please subscribe to me for financial arsenal. Please pick it up for free at the bottom of the video. See you next video. Bye.